Good afternoon, church and friends. Pastor Andrew here on Wednesday, July 8th, and hope everyone's having a good week so far. This week's kind of flying by. It's definitely hot out, too, so don't mind if I'm a little sweaty today and was took a nice long walk again to the church, and it's been so nice not driving. Don't have to worry about spending money on gas, and since don't have to really travel anywhere, too, I think my savings account is definitely growing thanks to not driving so much even though gas prices are still at a relatively reasonable price right now. <clears throat> so, but yeah, it's definitely getting warm out there. In fact, I was walking, took a little longer way to walk today and was paying attention too. And so I don't know how many of you take time to stop and pay attention and look at the flowers, listen to the running water. There's a little area where Old Meadow Valley Road meets with Jackson Street and there's just a beautiful little green area. There's a little spring that flows through there and some little purplish blue flowers that I had to stop and take a picture of as, and then went up Jackson on that steep hill where Meadow Valley, Old Meadow Valley Road meets it. And it's so beautiful walking along the forest land too and thankfully I didn't encounter any bears as last year I was walking home from the church office and a lady pulled up and rolled her window down and said, which way are you going? I said, well, I'm actually turning right here. She's like, good, there's a bear straight ahead. And one of my friends that lives up there, too, has encountered bears during the day. So, thankfully, no bears or mountain lions on this walk. So today, as we center ourselves and take a little few minutes out of our day to pause and reflect, I want to piggyback off of what we talked about yesterday. I read a meditation from Father Richard Rohr from the Center for Action and Contemplation. And it talked about wisdom in a time of change and talked about how we react to change and how change is constant in our world. And so it's one of those things that we can't avoid. And right now, especially with COVID-19 and all of the everything changing by the minute, it feels like it, it gets overwhelming. It definitely spikes our anxiety. It spikes our stress. Sometimes... We end up being different people than we usually are, sometimes maybe snapping out at people that we normally wouldn't, maybe getting a little short, which I know, and I have, and I apologize if to people if I've been a little edgy at times or short with people, as, you know, my own stress and anxiety has, and which is also why I am kind of trying to make some changes in my lifestyle, particularly how I eat and being more active, and so, which actually being more active feels so wonderful. Like I said, it's nice to walk places and be, be live in a walkable town, too, where I don't really have to drive. I could go car-free if I needed to. And even with, and even though I may not have to go to Reno or Chico for hospital visits right now because I'm not allowed in the hospitals, at least I have, at least I have my vehicle, too. So today as we turn to God's Word and turn to Scripture, I invite you to... If you have your Bibles with you, or if you have the Bible Gateway app, or any Bible app on your smartphone or tablet, or laptop, or your computer, I invite you to turn to Isaiah 43. And this is during a time of change for Israel. So this is from one of the prophets, Isaiah. And during this time, is Isaiah, this might be called Second Isaiah, in fact, that during the exile, is Isaiah is actually in three different parts. So we have 1st Isaiah, 2nd Isaiah, and 3rd Isaiah, and each of, each of these are before, during, and after the exile. So as we may have studied before, or if you're learning this, I'd love to talk more, but during Israel's time, they found the promised land, and then there was great wars and great conflict, and then King Nebuchadnezzar had invaded Israel's land, and then carried them off to exile, where they spent 70 years in Babylon. And so Isaiah is writing about how God intends to make all things new, as the prophets were oftentimes spokespeople for God, and oftentimes spoke truth to power as well. So let us hear these words from Isaiah 43, starting on verse 19. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth, do you perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me. 
the jackals and ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. And actually, let's go back up to 14, to verse 14. I somehow had my screen in the wrong place there, so forgive me there. So starting on verse, verse 14, it says, Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, For your sake I will send to Babylon and break down all the bars, and the shouting of the Chaldeans will be turned to lamentation. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior, they lie down, they cannot rise, they are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing, now it's forth. Do you not perceive it? And so Isaiah is basically telling Israel during the captivity to basically adapt, to get used to this. And even in other texts that the prophets speak through God, as there's several other exilic texts as well. And these are always fascinating to study as well when you get into the Old Testament or Hebrew Bible, as my Hebrew Bible professor would tell us, which thankfully she hasn't haunted me for that. <laughs> so when we think about change, so in verse... You know, verse 18, do not remember the former things or consider of old. Well, that's really hard to do. So we were talking yesterday in Father Rohr's meditation about how oftentimes change can sometimes either we can adapt, we can go with the flow, or like the REO Speedwagon song, song roll with the changes, keep on rolling. <laughs> or, you know, we can remember the things of old and become bitter, become resentful. And so, how are we going to react when we face sudden change? You know, our nation has experienced sudden change. Even right now we're experiencing sudden change, and even in the churches. We're actually being, trying to discern how we're doing a new thing, because I think that God is trying to show us during this time of sheltering and grace, about doing a new thing. In fact, I had a conversation with one of our members yesterday about creating online community. And I am definitely for that. Because this is probably how we're going to have to do things for the time being. We don't know how long, and even when we do reopen, I mean, things may are likely not going to be the same that they were. The old things. And so it's time to trust God in doing something new. So one of the churches that I had a lot of connection with when I was in Washington, D.C. for seminary was Mount Vernon Place United Methodist Church, which is an urban church downtown D.C., right across the street from the convention center, and down the, basically down the street from Capital One Arena and Chinatown and neighborhood. And, and at Mount Vernon Place, back in its heyday, was over 2,000 strong and had a large choir was bursting at the seams, the whole Sunday school wing. Well, over the years, the church declined, much like what's happening in a lot of our churches today. And oftentimes, people reminisce about the good old days when the church was bursting at the seam. Well, I happened to interview eight years ago for the music director position, and I was looking to get a church job to, as my primary employment during seminary. And so in my interview with past Reverend Dr. Donna Claycomb Sokol, she told me about her story when she was first appointed there in 2005. Pretty much the entire leadership was in their 90s. And the church was pretty much on life support at that time. Well, in a book that by her and Roger Owens from 2017 called A New Day in the City, they talk a lot about the changes that their churches have faced through the years and how congregants reacted. Well, it came to a point where Mount Vernon Place decided to sell their education wing to a developer, although there was an agreement that they got a new fellowship hall, new office space, new classrooms, as well as partnering with 
My alma mater, Wesley Theological Seminary, is that is Wesley's downtown campus. And they... So... But in the process of trying to let go of what was, it was very challenging. So when the book... Pastor Donna says that the congregation of Mount Vernon Place United Methodist Church literally had to move out of the building and let go of nostalgic dreams of the past in order to make space for God to first bring detachment and then bring visions of what could be. It was not long after moving day when the congregation started to learn how much they loved the building and all its contents for their sake instead of Christ's sake. We love more than 15 pianos even though we had a need for two. We loved silver tea sets, even though they had not been used for 40 years. We love our stuff, enough to fight over it at a garage sale when neighbors finally stepped inside the building. The stuff made people feel good, bringing back memories of the past. But our stuff will never have the power to touch, change, and transform lives. And so that's where we gotta trust God, when God is calling us to do a new thing. It's easy to remember the things of old. It's easy to feel good. But as I said yesterday, is it really that great? Was it really that great? Or is it just an illusion to what we are going through today? And so let us think about some vision. Let us think about how what we are doing can touch, change, and transform lives. It reminds me of the song from The Faith We Sing, Change My Heart, O God, Make It Ever True. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for today. We continue to seek your wisdom. We continue to seek your guidance in everything we do, especially in these times of change. And Help us to seek wisdom from you. Help us to fully trust in you to do a new thing with us. And Help guide us and lead us as we think about what this new thing looks like. Even though we often yearn for the good old days, we yearn for the things of old. We know that they may never come back. And so, Lord, help, us, help to push us, Lord. Help to get us out of our comfort zone. Help us to become comfortable being uncomfortable. And so, Lord... Be with us this week and today as we continue to discern, continue to be with those who are affected by COVID-19 for all of our essential workers, especially our medical professionals and our grocery workers, postal workers, everybody that's in the front on the front lines, public transit workers, you name it. And be, keep all of us safe and be with the leaders of our nation, our world, our community, and our state. And help guide them, Lord. Help lead them and guide them in everything that they do. And so, Lord, be with us now, today, and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so thanks to the taping schedule tomorrow, we're actually going to have a later taping schedule for worship. So we'll be back at 2 o'clock tomorrow. So I look forward to seeing you then. Have a great day, and I wish you peace and blessings.